So ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, uh, welcome to our webinar on uh, the question what US companies with business in Germany, France and Italy should know about the legal environment with COVID-19. This is a webinar we prepared specifically for our friends and contacts and clients in the US. So good morning if you're on the West Coast, good afternoon if you're on the east coast and in between i guess um, you had lunch already i hope you're all safe and um, i hope that um, the next 60 to 80 minutes depending on how much time we need and whether you will have question or not will be helpful to you and will give you um, an insight into matters that are important for your business we will speak um, about three issues that we believe are important for every uh, US company um, and if you're a lawyer then maybe your US clients uh, that have subsidiaries in Germany. Um, of course these are not all the issues that are important at the moment but I think probably we thought probably for every business these issues are important, namely supply chain and lease agreements. What happens to these uh, during our uh, times where supply chains are uncertain? Um, the question of wage relief measures, how to lessen the cost pressure on business uh, when the business slows down uh, for most, at least industrial companies, um, and also the very important question, what actually happens if you are a general manager of a German subsidiary? What are your fiduciary duties? What is uh, especially important in these times? And how can you um, protect also the rights and obligations, liabilities and um, and the situation of your general managers in Germany. In order to make it uh, particularly relevant for you, we thought that we uh, have the three largest jurisdictions in Europe um, together for you here. So we have uh, Germany, of course, which we of Biden Bukhat are going to cover uh, with um, myself, Christian from Listinghausen, and our speakers, Tassilo Klesen, Dr. Andreas Reuter, and um, Dr. Hans-Josef Vogel. We have our friends of Altana, uh, the French law firm with whom we work a lot, Gilles Gaillard, Michael Delande, and Marie André. And our friends in, in Italy of uh, NCTM Studio Legale, Paolo Gallarati and Michele Bignami. I will moderate this session. And I will give you a few rules um, now. So you may ask questions uh, during the webinar by using the question function on the screen. You should see in front of you uh, a toolbar uh, with the a rider which says questions. And you can type in the question. And um, we're just going to collect these questions. And at the end of a session or at the end of the seminar of the webinar, uh, we will address these questions um, either in general terms or if they are specific to one jurisdiction, then we will address them to the speakers. Um, and um, you will also be able to get this presentation later because we're going to record it and post it on our website. If you have very specific questions, we can you can also always send us an email. So now we're going to start with Germany and I give the floor to Tassi Loklesen, who is going to talk about supply chain and lease agreements in Germany. Thank you, Christian. Um, and uh, we are very happy that you have uh, attended our webinar or are attending our webinar. I will now start with uh, the German legal frame framework on the fate of contracts, uh, especially on the supply side and on the lease agreement side. Um, I will start with an example case um, in which 
the supplier cannot meet its contractual obligation to supply 100,000 connectors on time. And this is because um, the, the plant producing these connect connectors has been closed due to an administrative order. In the first variation, um, the plant is uh, closed in for a limited time. And in the variation two, uh, the plant is closed uh, for an unlimited time. So the question is, um, what can the supplier rely on and what's uh, his options to, to deal with this situation? Um, in the next slide, I will um, start with the first question, uh, or an important question, whether there is any force majeure clause in the contract at all. So um, the, the supplier should check the contractual basis um, if there's any such clause. Such clauses can exist in their own uh, general terms and conditions or in the, in the contract agreed with, with the customer. Um, if there is such, such a clause, um, it's uh, of course helpful if the clause specifically uh, refers to a p pandemic or any sort of such event uh, which is comparable to the current situation. Um, I will not go into much detail with regular force majeure clauses because these exist of course, in all these international um, contracts. However, um, as a first hint on, on German law, um, if this clause is subject to the, to the GTC, um, under German law, um, and if the contract also applies, um, is, is um, governed by German law, um, under the GTC control, um, a court could rule that such force majeure clause is not valid. As an example, um, courts uh, generally do not like if um, the force majeure clause exists, but uh, the execution of the clause is tied to further conditions which are surprising for the contractual party. So clauses which are too surprising would not work here. In the event we, we don't have any um, force majeure clause, we will check uh, whether uh, which law applies, and um, if the contract says German law applies, it's pretty easy. Uh, if we don't have such a clause, then we check the IPR or the conflict of laws um, field, and then we will see whether German law or any third country law applies. In the next slide, I will go into detail um, on how German statutory law um, re uh, resolves such cases. Um, in general, contracts are binding, of course, and are to be re, uh, respected. So changes in external circumstances are usually not relevant, uh, so the contracts cannot be adjusted. Um, of course, then the contract can be um, withdrawn off or uh, if rescission right exists. Um, and also, of course, the contractual penalties could incur. In any case, the corona is very incisive. so. The, the German concepts of the so-called legal impossibility or the legal concept of the disruption of the contractual basis could still occur. And um, then we would see in the next slide uh, whether any of these concepts could be triggered. The legal impossibility means that um, it is not possible to, to deliver on time. So. If we have a regular contract where the, the supplier needs to um, produce and deliver the products over a certain period of time, it's generally a normal disruption. So um, a delay, delay takes place, um, the, the customer has possibly the right to resign. Um, however, if it's a so-called fixed transaction and if the customer has no interest um, in, the con in the products, if they will be delivered at a later stage, um, the, the German concept of an impossibility could be triggered, and um, this is for could be the case with our variation one. So, if um, the administrative order is uh, limited in time, and if the customer is interested to be delivered with the product at a certain moment, then the legal concept of impossibility could be triggered, and then the, the supplier is entitled to refuse performance. Um, and in the, in the consequence, the contractual partner could risk it. In the next slide, I will um, give some insight on the other German concept on the disruption of the contractual basis. 
Um, in this case, uh, it's important that an event has occurred that uh, none of the parties could foresee um, and that this event or the, the change in, in circumstances could not be prevented with appropriate care. So um, in the end of last year, no party um, could have pot potentially foreseen the current uh, pandemic. And um, so if this leads to uh, the conclusion that the fulfillment of the contract is not longer reasonable, um, then in the, in the, in the, in the consequence, this legal concept could be triggered. So in our case example two, in the case of an unlimited administrative order, um, such, um, <clears throat> in such event, the customer might be able to state uh, that it does not make any sense to, to, to stick to this contract. And um, so that in this case, as a consequence, um, an adaption of the contract can be um, claimed by the supplier. So an adaption of the contract can mean that the supplier is obliged to, to arrange for a supply of the products by third parties. But if um, it's not possible to arrange for, that, for such a provision of products by third parties, um, in, the, in the consequence, um, it is possible to also simply withdraw from the contract. Other examples are state border closures or embargoes. In the next slide, I will give uh, some insight on lease agreements under the, under the German framework. Um, here in Germany, an act has been implemented uh, allowing the landlords to, or in, in the, the lessees to um, simply stop the payment of rents. So um, in, in this case, it's important that the, the lessee can um, prove that uh, there is a connection between the pandemic and the non-performance. In, in this case, the landlord is not entitled anymore to um, exercise his or her termination right. And this is the case in a period of um, 1st April until the 30th of June. This could possibly possibly be extended until the 30th of September. Um, the obligation to pay, of course, remains. So in this case, um, the, the interest on these payments due are still um, could st are still triggered. So in the next um, years um, after the the, ter the term has ended the um, lessee still needs to pay the, the rent itself and also the interest. It's important, of course, to, to be able to prove this connection. So in the last slide, what, what are the, the takeaways? Uh, what we often advise on, on for our clients here in Germany? Um, of course, review the, the existing contracts. Is there a force majeure clause or a, or a MEC clause? Um, if you enter into new contracts, arrange for such clauses, and also um, if you're afraid that in the future there could be um, the second wave or another event comparable to the pandemic, um, record the status quo. Um, if you see any problems, uh, check the contract ad adaption, so uh, take, uh, check whether it's possible to, to adapt this contract. Um, seek the dialogue with customers. Um, we are, of course, all in this together. Um, always arrange for certain uh, sufficient evidence, at least email correspondence. Um, in the event your own client or the clients um, of your client um, rejects any payments due to the pandemic, um, that's just the fact that this is um, stated does not necessarily mean, mean that there is such rights. So as a first step, reject it. Um, monitor your suppliers and customers, and uh, in the event of or for the for the lease agreements, search the dialogue um, with with the landlord. So, thank you very much for your attention. Um, I will now hand over to Andreas. Yes, thank you very much, Tassilo. My name is Andreas Reuter. I'm a employment lawyer in Germany and I will talk uh, about furlough work and short-time work in Germany. 
Um, please let me give you a short introduction um, to this. So the background of short-time work in Germany are the very good um, experiences Germany has made uh, with short-time work during the financial crisis in the year 2008. And the main approach of uh, short-time work in Germany is that uh, dismissals shall be prevented and that the employer and the employees shall be supported in the ongoing employment relationship. So uh, the aim is or the hope is that the economy will have a quick restart after the end of the crisis. Um, furthermore, there have been several legislative reforms that have made short-time work even more attractive in Germany. Most important is here the 100% reimbursement of uh, social security contributions in favor of the employers. And um, at the moment, we have a very high demand for short-time work during the corona crisis as there are more than 700,000 employers who have already applied for short-time work. And uh, there are more than 10 million employees who are being put on short-time work at the moment. Um, let me talk about the basic principles of short-time work. Um, on the one side, you have the employees uh, who reduce their working time or do not work at all. Uh, the last thing is called short time work zero. And on the other hand, you have the employers uh, who only have to pay the salary and the social contributions to the extent to which the employees actually work. And um, the loss of income um, is uh, cushioned by the short time allowance and uh, according to this, employees with children basically receive 67% of their net, net loss of income and um, employees without children basically receive 60% of their net loss of income, which is capped, capped at an income threshold. Uh, this income threshold is in Western Germany at the moment 6,900 euro gross. And in the eastern part of Germany, it is at the moment 6,450 euros. Um, the next slide shows uh, two examples. Um, in the first example, we have an employee with one child who, er who earns 2,000 euro net in case of full-time work. But uh, due to short time work zero, this employee stops working. So uh, in this case, the employee will receive a, a short time allowance in the amount of about 1,340 euro. Um, these are the 67% of his uh, loss of net income. And in this example, the employer no longer has to pay any money for salary and for social security contributions as long as we have uh, short time work. In the second example, we have the same employee with uh, one child and with an income of 2000 euro net in case of full time work. And in the second example, due to short time work, this employee only works 20 instead of 40 hours. So in this case, uh, the employee can claim um, an income of 1,000 euro net from his employer and can also claim a short time allowance in the amount of 670 euro per month. And the employer of this employee only has to pay about 50% um, of the costs for salary and uh, social security contributions. Next slide, please. Um, the, the most important preconditions of short-time work for the employer is that the employer needs a so-called lack of work. Um, this lack of work can be due to economic reasons, as for example, 
problems with the supply chain or uh, a lack of raw materials, but it can also be due to an unavoidable event such as instructions of state authorities to shut down the business or uh, catastrophes or accidents like fire. Um, furthermore, the uh, lack of work has to have a temporary nature, otherwise the employer would have to think about uh, dismissals. Furthermore, the lack of work has to be unavoidable and at least 10% of the employees of a certain business have to be affected with a loss of income of at least 10% of the gross monthly income. The most important personal requirements are, um, first of all, that the employment relationship may not be terminated and that the employee may not be sick when the short time period starts and the affected employee has to participate in job placement efforts of the employment agency. Please note, uh, it is very important that you do not have to introduce short time work for your whole company or for all employees of your company simultaneously it is also possible to introduce short-time work only for certain divisions of your company or to put some employees on short-time work zero and to keep other employees working with uh, 50%. Um, my last topic are the practical implementation steps for short-time work. In Germany, you have four steps you have to take in order to able to introduce short-time work. The first step is that you need a legal basis for the introduction of short-time work. This can be an agreement with the trade union. So please have a look at your bargaining agreements. Furthermore, it's also possible to, um, to have an agreement with the works council. And please note, if you have a works council in your company, you will have to talk with the works council regarding short-time work anyhow. The next possibility for the introduction of short-time work is to have a look in the employment contracts. Quite a few employment contracts already have stipulations regarding the introduction of short-time work. And the last possibility is to agree an amendment with the affected employees and our experience is that most, most employees have an understanding that it is necessary to introduce short-time work. Um, please note that the legal basis for short-time work is very important because in case that the legal basis is invalid, you have the risk that the employment agency will claim payback of the short-time allowance payments. The, step, the second step of the, for the employers is that they have to make a notification at the employment agency um, and will have to declare, first of all, the reasons for the short-time work, but will also have to name the anticipated period of short-time work and the, the number of employees who most probably will be affected of the short-time work. Um, the third step is that the employers have to calculate for every single affected employee the exact amount of short-time allowance. And in a first step, the employers have to pay the short-time allowance and the relevant social contributions to the affected employees. And then on the fourth and last step, uh, the employers have to apply for a reimbursement at the employment agency within a cut-off period of three months. And uh, by applying for reimbursement, the employers have to demonstrate the employment agency, the calculations of the short-time allowance. And then, most probably within 15 days, the employment agency will reimburse 
the short time allowance to the affected employers. So um, my conclusion regarding short time work is very positive as it gives uh, employers in Germany a very quick and strong financial relief. And it also enables German employers to have some rest in order to plan the next steps in these difficult times. So thank you very much for your attention. And I want to pass on to my colleague, Professor Vogel. Thank you very much. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for spending your lunchtime or your breakfast time, depending on where you are with us. Um, I will be discussing briefly the liability and fiduciary duties of general managers, and especially in connection to two circumstances. One is how has the business judgment rule been affected by COVID-19 and also which uh, rules have been alleviated at the interface of the personal liability of the managing directors and certain regulatory issues such as insolvency law. In that regard, just a short overview to understand that the liability of the managing director under German law exists on two levels. One is the external liability vis-a-vis -vis third parties and the internal liability. In view of the internal liability, it is important to remember that that internal liability is not only one which the shareholders of the company itself can raise, but very often causes enormous problems once the company goes into insolvency. Why? Because the receiver has the right to bring forward such claims that originally the company or the shareholders had against the relevant director. And therefore, very often you will find that in the situation of insolvency, the managing director is personally affected. And let's not kid ourselves as much as we try to, to help and as much as we hope that we will survive the crisis. Of course, there will be a rebound of the numbers of insolvencies compared to the last years. Um, on the next slide, we can see that we have external, that's a, the company invocation of trust and violation of protected legal interest. This area here, the invocation of trust is the only one which is of some importance because what we notice is that quite often you will now find companies that are hard up um, having their managers, their managing directors issue statements of financial health, um, issue, issue statements of we will survive the crisis and try to keep the business afloat. All that is fine and well, but for a managing director certainly carries a, a risk that if that statement was fraudulent, at the time of being made, he risked personal liability. And on the next slide, um, we see that we have two areas that cover the internal liability of the managing director. One is the liability pursued to corporate law, and the other is the specific liability pursued to such issues as insolvency code and other related issues. The general rule is a director who breaches any rule, any guideline that he has either by law, by the Articles of Association or by his shareholders is personally liable for all of the claims that he creates. And if we please go forward two slides because I see that I'm the last one in our um, group. So I have to make up the lost time. Um, there are a couple of things that are very important on, on that area. The breaches um, that we usually see where a director runs up liability are issues where he does not follow certain protocol or where he does not keep abreast of certain developments. Especially in view of the current situation, it is highly important to remind directors that they need to keep abreast of developments, especially developments in law that are aimed at alleviating burdens. These are areas such as the furlough discussion we just had 
a couple of minutes ago. These are state aid protocols, these are other protocols, and it is expected by German law of a managing director of a company that he informs shareholders on those issues and that he, if possible, makes use of these issues. He has to keep abreast of health and safety issues, manage cash flow, have reporting systems. All these are duties of the managing director and they're certainly exacerbated by the current legal and also um, general business environment to simply assert that, for instance, his workforce is not overly burdened by COVID issues, by, for instance, splitting up teams or reacting in due course to any release that may be available. In terms of the business judgment rule, please understand that also under German law, um, the business judgment rule, as you basically know from Anglo-American legal practice, has been taken on, and it's something which the um, director of a company has to definitely understand in the current environment. So documentation and communication is key to be able to show that it is a business decision and the director has acted on the basis of adequate information. We all will not know what in a couple of years time a court will understand to be the correct basis for information. So right now it is very important for all directors to actually have written uh, to, to, to have written documentation on which information is available, where did they take that from, and how did they actually act based upon that information. And that includes the need to continuously upgrade that information and to show that possibly the basis for action have changed and therefore also address any future amendments or changes. In terms of special legal liability rules on the next slide, you will see that there are four issues where German law has quickly, the legislation has, uh, legislative has quickly reacted uh, to those four issues with all in a way have to do with insolvency. The first issue on the next slide is the duty to file for insolvency proceedings. Under German law, the director of a limited liability company or of a stock corporation or a limited liability partnership has the legal obligation to file for insolvency within three weeks after the company is either illiquid, which means they cannot pay at least 90% of their debts that become due within the next three weeks. So they're over indebted means the debts outweigh the asset and there's no going forward perspective. Both these requirements to file for insolvency are sanctioned by criminal and civil liability for the managing director. And quite early on in the uh, Corona crisis, the German parliament passed a law that said the filing requirement has been temporarily withheld, meaning there's no need to file for insolvency on Sept until September 30, 2020, which may be prolonged. Um, Unless, and it's unless the insolvency is not caused by the corona pandemic. So if you run a business that already has been hard hit, and it is not hard hit just because of corona, that temporary um, suspension of filing requirements will not apply. And more importantly, there has to be a overcome the liquidity that may be through the infusion of capital, that may be through the infusion of loans, of state aid, of an uptick in business. Um, it is important to actually have documentation ready that, that the company was not in December 31st, 2020, because there's an assumption that if the company was doing okay at the end of last year, so it has to be 19 there, not 20, uh, then the company is actually, the, the, the illiquidity is not caused by Corona. On the next slide, we come to another topic, which is quite weird under German law, because we have a rule that says if the managing director makes 
payments, any payments whatsoever to creditors at the time where the company was already insolvent, where it was either illiquid or over indebted, regardless of whether the filing process has been started, the insolvency receiver can claw back any such payments unless they were made with a standard of a prudent businessman. The standard of a prudent businessman by the courts is interpreted to have very narrow application. So very often you will find that in insolvency proceedings, the director actually is faced with a amount of uh, clawback that he has to foot and that he is responsible for. So the, the idea behind that is, is to force the director to file for insolvency as soon as it is necessary. And this has also been temporarily suspended. So any payment whatsoever made in the orderly course of business in fulfilling contractual obligations or in fulfilling a restructuring plan is considered as a prudent payment and therefore cannot be clawed back. Which leaves us with another question on the next slide, how we deal with the infusion of capital. And German law has a, a simple rule that says, if you as a shareholder grant a loan to the company and the company files for insolvency, any payment made between filing for insolvency retroactively for one year be, can be clawed back by the receiver. So any payment within one year, repayment of a loan within one year prior to filing for insolvency can be clawed back by the receiver, which in the current climate, of course, poses an issue for shareholders because they cannot be sure whether the infusion of capital actually is sensible. Therefore, the uh, German law has been changed to now allow any loans made until September 20, 30, 2020 can be repaid for three years, which means an infusion of cash from the shareholders into the business is treated not different from any other loan by a bank or by some other institution, and therefore is not disadvantaged in terms of payback. And finally, on the next slide, there's another um, issue the, which has been addressed and changed, and that's the issue of what we would call avoidance. Avoidance simply means that an insolvency receiver or administrator can renege on certain contracts or performances of contracts. Um, generally, the rule is that if the recipient of any payment with a very or any performance knew that the company was illiquid or was aware that the company or was aware of circumstances that the company was illiquid, he can claw back all these performances, meaning that the recipient, an outside third party, potentially has to repay. And to give you an idea, for instance, not paying on time, knowledge that very often a second notice, a second payment reminder is necessary, a request for delay in payment or a request for partial payment are circumstances where the courts have said that is sufficient to uh, constitute awareness of circumstances that there is financial hardship and therefore allows a clawback. This is for contracts where the performance happened as was agreed on. Any performance which was altered where there was, for instance, a shortening of payment period, so other payments made can be even clawed back further because no knowledge is needed. Now, the law says any performance as agreed on can not be voided, which means any regular payment, regardless of knowledge of the financial hardship of the recipient, cannot be clawed back by the insolvency receiver. And numerous means of change performance, for instance, shortening the payment period or an assignment instead of a cash payment, are not subject to avoidance. So what does that all mean? as a couple of takeaways it is important to plan liquidity obviously document financial health as of december 31st 2019 uh 
document that payments serve to uphold or up restart operations and are in line with a restructuring plan if you have such a plan and make use of shareholder loans simply because those shareholder loans are not treated worse than any bank loan and finally um, there is the the option to use assets of the company to secure shareholder loans to grant shareholders at least even in cases of insolvency the option to through using the security receive repayment with that i'll pass back to christian from Wistinghausen and thank you for your attention yes thank you very much hans josef uh, thank you this was the german part now we're going to move on to the french and the italian part the idea is to cover basically the the, the main topics but of course there are variations um, and I would therefore uh, like to um, give the floor to Marie André, who is a partner with the French law firm Altana, and who is going to speak about uh, the contractual issues, but also financial support of the French state in the current situation. So, Marie, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So, um, the based on the um, EC. Uh, temporary uh, framework for the date uh, uh, that was adopted by the European Commission. Um, a temporary um, aid chain was adopted by the French uh, government and duly authorized by the uh, uh, European Commission, consisted in, uh, consisting in uh, bank loans guarantees uh, granted by the, the, the French state under uh, several uh, eligibility uh, conditions. Any company uh, registered in a national register in France uh, can apply for its benefits. Um, whereas in the initial con uh, version of the Act, uh, none of these uh, measures was applicable to recipients uh, uh, which were in a situation of uh, bankruptcy, meaning uh, safeguard, insolvency, or judicial liquidation. Uh, this restriction was deleted in the most version of the Act uh, that was amended uh, no later than uh, last week. Um, finally, no prior notification uh, to the EC of uh, the individual aids um, uh, to be granted on the basis of uh, this uh, temporary uh, framework is uh, needed, unless, as we will see, the eligibility conditions are not met. Um, among these three illustrations, I uh, will only comment uh, the Air France uh, uh, example. So Air France, the French national uh, um, uh, airline company, um, is interesting because the, uh, the company obtained uh, uh, a loan uh, uh, from the, 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 the uh, with French state uh, guarantee, but as the amount uh, was exceeding the maximum. Uh, uh, legal setting uh, um, uh, of the French uh, transitional uh, chain, uh, the government, the French state, had to notify um, um, this uh, aid uh, to grant, uh, to get uh, the EC's um, uh, clearance, uh, which is an exception to uh, the principle uh, of uh, uh, the chain. Among uh, um, others, uh, um, um, Measure we have also this uh, the adaptation of the the contract uh, through the, the the ordinary contractual mechanism. Um, almost two main mechanism can be uh, mentioned and uh, will have an impact on the the contract. So uh, the first one is uh, first the first measure. Um, the usual definition of which is provided by the the French civil code. Um, however, this uh, provision is not uh, uh, a matter of uh, public order, so it means that uh, um, contractual uh, are possible, like uh, the adjustment uh, of uh, the condition of the first measure, like deletion of uh, criteria uh, with, uh, for example, no reference to uh, unforeseeability. Um, should the effect of uh, the first measure event become permanent, uh, it would result in the termination of uh, the agreement. The other mechanism refers to our cheap clause, or uh, what we call under French law, unforeseen uh, uh, circumstances, 
according to the civil code, um, the contract may be adjusted uh, to restore its uh, financial initial balance um, in case of unforeseenable events, uh, which would render the performance of an obligation um, more complex for a debtor. Um, here, the effect of the events uh, must be temporary by contrast with the force majeure. Um, the parties are allowed to renegotiate uh, the term of the contract or failing to do so to uh, resolve the agreement. Uh, should they need help, we can refer um, a claim to uh, the court in order to get an adjudication by the judge or uh, judicial uh, resolution of uh, the contract. Here again, this provision is, however, not a matter of public order. So, in other words, the party may decide to uh, leave it and apply in all or in part, like uh, uh, not uh, referring uh, the case to the court, for example. Um, we have also derogative uh, uh, temporary uh, framework uh, that were adopted by the French government. Um, an illustration with the uh, the adaptation of the enforcement of the sanction for non-compliance uh, with contractual time limits like penalty payment, penalty close, or termination, um, which are all suspended um, except payment terms which remain in force. As they are suspended, uh, this result in the, the postponement of their enforcement after the expiry of the legal protected uh, period, uh, which is pending right now. Um, various situations will coexist uh, depending uh, on the date of the um, expiry of the time limit concern before or after the entry into force uh, of the protected period. And, um, that will have an impact on the corresponding um, unforeseeability date uh, of the sanction. Um, as you may understand, the application of this rule shall be uh, absolutely carefully envisaged uh, due to the variety of situation that uh, uh, the, 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 the contracting parties uh, may face. Um, next slide. Another illustration that can be found also in the tourism sector. The government has um, adapted an alternate uh, temporary solution to the usual reimbursement of the price paid in case of the cancellation of a contract uh, um, that may have been entered into with a tour operator. Um, this solution is aimed at maintaining the um, tourism group's uh, cash flow uh, in, um, in a period, of course, uh, where their activity is almost new. So, uh, according to this, uh, to this act, uh, the seller is uh, allowed to replace at his discretion the refunding um, of the price by the issuance of a credit note, which is valid for 18 months. Uh, the scope of the measure is very large, uh, covering uh, numerous of uh, uh, activities related to tourism, but by exception, airline uh, companies are not concerned by this measure. Competition and consumer law have also um, been adapted. Um, uh, regarding competition law, uh, a specific framework has been uh, um, adopted in order to facilitate uh, temporary cooperation with uh, uh, between undertakings aimed at uh, uh, to avoid uh, uh, disruption in the production, the supply, uh, or the delivery of uh, essential goods, or in the R and D or production of uh, products connected to medical uh, uh, treatment. Um, under conditions that in ordinary circumstances would have been viewed as um, anti-competitive practices like exchange of sensitive information or client or market allocation. Um, the uh, French Competition Authority agrees to provide uh, prior guidance uh, to undertakings in uh, the setting of uh, 
uh, their project. Um, a comparable uh, mechanism uh, is also in force at the uh, European level. And this is a, an exception uh, to the general principle pursuant to which there is no prior control on agreement between undertakings, unless, of course, uh, um, it results in a measure that would be uh, uh, subject to uh, uh, prior measure control. Um, Beyond this specific adaptation, uh, the um, FCA will still monitor, of course, the market to identify any potential illicit practices like excessive pricing uh, uh, practices or uh, the abuse by a dominant, dominant player of its uh, um, uh, position. Uh, all this practice will be, of course, uh, chased and prosecuted as usual. And lastly, consumers are invited to inform the FCA of any um, illicit practice they would uh, have detected, which is uh, an exception uh, regarding the um, ordinary situation in, uh, in which um, individuals have uh, no right to refer any case to um, the regulator. Regarding uh, consumer uh, law this, uh, this time, um, here the, um, the uh, administration um, uh, wants to make sure that uh, the consumer remains fully protected against uh, uh, unfair commercial uh, practices like uh, abuse of resale prices or misleading um, advertising or information on uh, the um, actual delivery terms, the properties of uh, goods uh, related, for instance, to a certain level of protection it would offer against uh, uh, COVID-19 and etc. Um, the French government has, for example, imposed a maximum uh, resale price cap on um, uh, hydro uh, alcoholic gels and uh, surgical masks. They have also launched a specific platform called Signal Conso uh, to report uh, any suspected illicit practice um, that the consumer may have uh, evidence. Um, so finally, the recommendation remains the same. Um, with consumer law, it means that uh, transparent and fair information shall still be provided to consumer and client. Um, and the, 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 the enforcement uh, of uh, this rule is uh, uh, probably um, postponed uh, at the time being, but uh, it is sure that uh, they will be uh, prosecuted and investigated later. So it is um, really important to uh, to keep in line with the, all the um, uh, all the rules uh, which are uh, usually enforced. Thank you. And now I. Uh, leave the micro to my partner, uh, Michael Dallon, for the uh, employment law issues. Thank you very much. Th thank you, Marie. Uh, so, uh, French employment law, in a, in a nutshell, uh, three topics to, um, to to discuss. The first one, short time work, of course. Um, so, um, as in Germany, the rules have been adapted uh, to take into account the uh, exceptional circumstances. Uh, a large majority of French companies are now concerned with this scheme. We're talking about 12 million of employees. Um, so, 60% of the employees in France are covered by this scheme. Uh, in order to benefit for, from it, from uh, short-term work, you need to be authorized. Uh, by the French administration, you also need to consult your World Council, uh, being reminded that the uh, opinion of the World Council is not binding. Um, the employees will receive a remuneration uh, that covers at least 70% uh, of their normal uh, salary. So it is a very generous scheme. And uh, the counterpart is that the employer is at this stage fully reimbursed by the state, so it costs nothing uh, to the employer. Uh, this scheme will last until the end of May, and we will see if the rules are adapted in the beginning of June. The counterpart of that is that companies may be tempted to fraud 
uh, and to put at the same time people in um, short time work and in teleworking. And the French administration has already explained that they will control, uh, that they will proceed to control uh, within the companies to detect some uh, fraud situations. The second topic deals with the breaches of employment contracts. Uh, in France, it is still possible. Uh, of course, companies uh, may consider to uh, proceed to uh, uh, economic dismissals. At this stage, it is not banned, still possible, but the French administration uh, has explained that they may be more severe in approving the redundancy plans. Uh, and at this stage, uh, statistics shows that the companies currently favor the use of short-time work. Um, so, uh, but we will see in the next few weeks or months uh, if things change. Uh, of course, uh, we may, uh, we're waiting for a wave of dismissals in the next few months. You will see that the dismissals for other reasons are also still possible. You, you can dismiss somebody for misconduct or poor performance um, during this particular period. Uh, and you can also um, organize the termination of an employment contract by mutual agreement, what we call in France structure conventionnelle, still possible uh, again. So uh, health and safety issues uh, raised by the situation. Uh, in front, the employer must be very careful uh, as he has to assess uh, what are the occupational risks. Uh, he has to take appropriate measures. Uh, he has to inform the employees or um, what are the prevention measures that he is um, uh, implementing. Uh, he has to provide the employees with all the necessary means to prevent the spread of the virus. And it is highly recommended to uh, work closely with the unions and the work council to determine the, the best way uh, to protect the, the employees. For all these reasons, the use of telework is still the rule uh, if it is practicable uh, for the companies and, of course, regarding the job positions. Um, and um, the, the, the main issue is that if you fail to meet this obligation, um, well, then the employer can be held civilly or even criminally uh, liable. Uh, so this is a very important uh, point of, uh, of attention in France. And the other risk, uh, very bad for the business, is that the employees may also exercise a right to withdraw from work uh, if uh, they consider that there is a serious and imminent danger uh, for their life or their health. So. Um, Thank you. And talking about uh, uh, liability of general manager, uh, I leave now the, the mic to my partner, Gilles Gaillard. Um, thank you, Michael. Um, I would say a few words, because I think we're running a little bit out of time. So I would say a few words about the fiduciary duties and liabilities of the general manager in the context of the, the COVID-19. So you've seen with Marie a few minutes ago that the French government has been taking extensive measures uh, to uh, uh, ensure sustainability of business and to avoid insolvency or cooperation. So the, the whole idea behind, behind these measures is through the injecting of a massive funds through in the economy, reducing the financial exposure of the corporation, while also an, ensuring continuity of business and particularly uh, the ongoing payment of, of debts uh, between the commercial partners in due time. So as a result, the possibility to go bankrupt is supposedly to be uh, as remote as possible. Uh, so I'll, maybe a few words about governance principles and to complement maybe what, uh, what uh, uh, Dr. Vogel was saying. We, we're not exactly within the same principles as uh, under German law. Uh, here we, we have a situation where the, the, the duties and liabilities of the manager are not set by law but are as a result of a long case law which is extremely factual. And the second principle is that the, the general manager are vested uh, generally with the most extended uh, powers to act on behalf of the company and their limitation um, being either with other corporate bodies such as the shareholders meeting uh, in the law or in the articles of association are uh, only applicable to, uh, to an, an internal extent. 
which means that in terms of civil civil liability, the, uh, the, 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 the directors and the managers will be held um, liable at the request um, quasi exclusively of the shareholders and um, of the company and with the shareholders if they act on behalf of the company or the company itself. And the third parties may seek liability of the, the directors and the managers only in very exceptional circumstances where there's a separable, separable fault uh, that was committed by the, 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 uh, the director from his corporate duties. So in addition, we'll have obviously criminal liability and this stems from law and, and, and case law as well. And we will have a situation where there will be an extension, a possible extension of liability in case of a liquidation. I will come back to that briefly if we have a minute at the end. So uh, what would be the recommendation that we could give, give to uh, uh, the, the, the general manager or the U.S. counterpart for, as, as a, a holding company or, or uh, councils in, in the U.S.? Well, obviously, this is a difficult situation for a general manager because in, in addition to their uh, obligation to conduct their duties with reasonable care, this obligation is, is obviously um, extended in the COVID-19 situation and key uh, uh, attention uh, in, in, our, in our position should be uh, on, on certain aspects such as information. And I think this was covered already uh, by our German friends. So uh, we have such an extensive number of rules that was, were adopted and they are so complex and changed over the last uh, weeks that uh, the manager has to be, uh, you know, have this uh, very uh, a sensitive survey to, to, to keep on the set of legal rules. And this also, of course, is tend to the assessment of risk. And this in this area that would require uh, uh, nearly uh, um, uh, daily updates of the risk mapping, which is some really uh, a very a very huge uh, task. Uh, in addition to that, and and also was mentioned by our, our German friends, the information is key. So maintaining robust financial information and spreading the news to uh, both internally and externally is 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 essential. And this will obviously be. Uh, uh, an, a major aspect in obtaining additional fi financial facilities as well as uh, government ads. Dividends is a sensitive matter uh, uh, as the, the, the monitoring of cash. And you, you will see among the government measures that we're taking that for larger companies, those with more than 5,000 employees or 1.5 billion of uh, annual revenues, the uh, possibility to postpone the payment of taxes and social charges is subject to uh, the absence of distribution of dividends and of um, uh, buyback programs of, uh, of shares in 2020. Uh, the next aspect in, uh, and is relating to information is the obligation to maintain a regular uh, board meetings and shareholder meetings, which obviously is uh, a major constraint uh, in, in, in the uh, lockdown period. And this is the reason why we had an ordinance uh, that was passed a few uh, weeks ago that allow uh, to, um, to, to the organization of, of, dis of distance um, meetings um, between absentees, even uh, if that was uh, excluded or not provided in, in the bylaws. So I will not come back as uh, answer Joseph Wogel uh, related to the importance of information in terms of uh, evidence uh, of the debates and the the, the accuracy of minutes is, is crucial to avoid uh, liability obviously um, the next I think the next key point of, of attention would be to seek professional advice we, we've seen this tremendous amount of, of uh, legislation the absence of um, of judicial uh, coverage you know all the courts are suspended in France uh, for now long. So this creates uh, an area of, a, of uncertainty and this force obviously the managers to seek for professional advice and I think you, you've been sensitive to what Marie-André said and also Mike, uh, Michael that on, on, on the social aspects but there's also all the financial ads, um, the, the, the director's duties, the insurance coverage which is uh, critical and, uh, and other areas uh, specifically covered by legislation. Uh, so in our next slide, I will cover maybe the last two uh, key aspects, which are the maintaining of the customer and supply relationship. So here we, I think the, the government 
intended to push uh, all the actors to maintain a flow of business, which means uh, the same level of communication and, and exchange of information. Also, the adaptation of contract terms and, and the maintaining of payment obligation uh, in due time. Um, employees' health and safety was highly covered by Michael, so I will just probably emphasize that this is something new for directors. In, in, I mean, health and safety was a, a more remote um, area of liability on duties in, in the past, uh, and it was probably more enhanced in certain sectors. Now it's a broad obligation that ap applied to all uh, corporation, and it's something that is diffused. It's very hard to, to, to materialize. Uh, last, finance and insolvency. Um, well, um, finance is, is of, the of the essence for the sustainability of the economy. So the, the general manager have a duty to monitor very carefully finance and cash to uh, conduct all the measures that are required to obtain additional finance if necessary. And if they cannot, because this is not something that is that is uh, impossible, if they have become insolvent, then they have to take, of course, the necessary steps to avoid liability. And among the, the many uh, breaches that may cause liability for directors, you, you may, uh, of course, think about the insufficiency of assets to, to cover debts, but also the, the correct use of our corporate assets. So uh, as uh, a conclusion, I would say that it's a very tough time for managers of French subsidiaries uh, nowadays. And I think they would really appreciate to have uh, some attention on a day-to-day -day basis uh, uh, abroad in the US as well. Thank you. And I will pass back the floor to Christian. Yes, Gilles, thank you. Thank you very much um, uh, for this very comprehensive uh, presentation on um, the French legal aspects. And um, I would like to remind the participants that you can ask questions using your dashboard um, under the right of questions. Uh, there's, of course, there's a lot of information here, but please feel free to do so. Um, and um, I would also then like to introduce um, our colleagues of NCTM Studio Legale and um, uh, pass the uh, floor to Paolo Gallarati, who is going to start um, the presentation and speak also about the contractual aspects um, and the influence of the COVID situation on supply chain and lease agreements under Italian law. Paolo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Christian. Thank you very much. I will uh, uh, focus my with the remedies, the general remedies uh, in case of majors, post major events under Italian law, some special regulations related to COVID-19, and then some specific remedies in the contractual framework. So, you know, it's Italy is a civil law country. So we us usually uh, supposed to have a piece of legislation covering most of aspects of our commercial life. So we don't necessarily rely on the full length of agreements, you will hardly find uh, agreements uh, with hundreds of pages uh, when they are covered by Italian law relating to the domestic market. Of course, in the international market, this is completely different. But when you come to domestic agreements, uh, they're very, very easy. Most of them uh, focus on the key economic aspects, but they do not contain for major hardship clauses like the international standards. So actually, let's get to the question. What happens uh, if, uh, like in most cases, contracts do not provide anything in the given situation? And we know the pandemic uh, is likely to be a post major event, at least in Italy. You know, Italy has been hidden a lot by the pandemic, at least Lombardy, which is the heart uh, of the industrial bone of the backbone of Italy and uh, you can count Lombardy has been hidden probably uh, 10 to 15 times more than the rest of Italy. You can consider the rest of Italy has been hidden more or less like Germany. Four uh, cases of COVID death uh, every 100,000 uh, inhabitants, whilst Lombardy 67 death every 100,000 inhabitants. And if you consider that the industrial sector is heavily concentrated in Lombardy, you may understand the, the problem we've got. Now, of course, major 
is likely to be applicable to most uh, companies and uh, and some of the very very limited uh, uh, limited uh, uh, concerns but so what comes if uh, a company uh, and, uh, you take more than 200 uh, special regulations covering each aspect of the financial tax uh, social security labor but uh, very very limited uh, provisions related to commercial contracts because uh, probably we are trying to understand what the impact can the impact can be of uh, uh, forced major on commercial agreements and we are trying to rely on the general principles of the italian law which very similarly to germany and france uh, they are concentrated to what we call supervening impossibility which is the equivalent more or less of for force major hardship in the performance and uh, a recession for harm the supervening impossibility has a very specific characteristic it has to be absolute so one party has to be in the absolute impossibility to perform the, the obligation so it's not just a difficulty they are forced not to perform their uh, contract and obviously if you take italy now where there has been a closure of most commercial activities and many industrial activities by a uh, state order there has not been a recommendation there has been a state order then you can consider that a state order is a fourth major and this leads usually to the impossibility what happens in case of impossibility there is no renegotiation allowed there is only a a, a, a contract a, a, sorry a legal right to terminate the agreement or to suspend performance entirely so if it's a debtor it can suspend payments uh, if it can no longer pay because of an impossibility to get the money which is very hard to prove or if there is a supplier who can no longer perform because its factory has been closed by order of state of course it can uh, suspend performance but cannot renegotiate the commercial terms freely with the other party unless the other party agrees to that so there is no legal provision which allows for the renegotiation of the contract there is a general principle in the commercial agreement to renegotiate in good faith but there is no legal obligation to do so hardship in performance the same there has to be a great imbalance caused by covid 19 pandemic then uh, recession when a party takes advantage of the other party weakness uh, and try to impose uh, some contractual prices which are higher than normal practice but again in this case the imbalance has to be more than 50 percent so you may see the legal provisions covering uh, this kind of situations are really for extreme cases so what's the uh, recommendation the recommendation is keep trace of any possible difficulty please keep trying and trying to build up a defense in speaking and writing to your counterparty and most of all you should consider suspending performance in order to engage a negotiation because that's the only way to get to a negotiation table if uh, one of the parties has to go to court then the judge will have to consider a rebuttable presumption that a first major has a court and so has to take a position which uh, should be in favor of the weaker party so please consider if your supplier the supplier will probably be the weaker party if you're a landlord and there is a tenant then the tenant is used to be a weaker party so we should consider that and this is a a, a very important reason leave the other party take the extreme remediation of terminating the agreement or suspending payment uh, in, in full just a couple of words about uh, some special regulations also in italy of course uh, there is a tremendous problem in terms of travels and uh, there has been uh, one piece of legislation covering reimbursement of travel tickets, accommodations, and so on. What says the law is simply that uh, the 
the customer isn't or a voucher the same price of the of the of the tickets or the accommodation purchased you should consider this is not a, a, a law which is in favor of the consumer because of course the consumer would have a right of reimbursement anyway if it or she can no longer uh, take that travel this is a provision in favor of the merchant because the choice about whether granting the reimbursement or granting the voucher will rest with the merchants one additional piece of legislation very important uh, with respect to commercial agreements especially in the international arena you may remember that uh, in case of international contracts uh, example those covered by the unit right principle or those covered by icc arbitration there is usually the possibility to get in some uh, statements from the uh, relevant country uh, in terms of the existence of a force major events now italy has already organized a system of releasing this kind of uh, certification to each of the companies requesting so to the relevant uh, chamber of commerce so we would suggest all customers to hurry up and contact the chamber of commerce in order to get the statements last but not least specific remedies with respect to lease agreements and procurement contracts lease agreements you should consider if there is a commercial premise which has been closed down due to an order of the state then the tenant should have an argument to suspend payments of the of the of the rental because there was no possibility factual possibility or legal possibility to benefit of that premise but if there is no order of closure because not all the commercial premises have been closed for instance uh, uh, optical products uh, and the right of withdrawal for serious reasons uh, on the tenant uh, in the case that the tenant is no longer able to pay the rental fee let's say for a period of six months finally procurement contracts there is no special provisions but keep in mind that there is a general provision in italian construction law according to which if there is an imbalance of more than 10 percent in the cost of materials or cost of the workmanship then the um, the contractor has a right to renegotiate and get a balance of the agreement by claiming the difference so that's the only case when a renegotiation can be made by the constructor finally before leaving the word to my colleague uh, just a few words about fiduciary duties the situation is very similar to germany and french in terms of principles fiduciary duties uh, um, already endorsed by the italian case law but just three very important principles you should consider now the emergency legislation has basically said first of all attention of all insolvency procedures and demands until the end of december 2020 has been has suspended all thin capitalization rules regarding company so shareholders loan are no longer subordinated uh, to commercial credits and first recapitalization that is lost have been suspended until december 2020 so managers have a certain flexibility to face the crisis and get their financial resources uh, comfortably i wouldn't say easily but comfortably in terms of time at least in the next nine months as of january 1st 2021 when all the general provisions will come back to force again they should be prepared and demonstrate that they have acted prudently even if there was a suspension of all of the possible insolvency, thin capitalization or recapitalization duties. That's it. Thank you very much. I will pass on the floor to Michele Bignami as to Labour Aspects. Thank you, Paolo. I will describe very few, let's say, notion, few information, very practical. As Paolo explained before, the situation in Italy and the north of Italy was dramatic and so the government adopted uh, very let's say radical measures the first of which was the suspension of any collective dismissal procedure 
that was commenced before the 23rd of February and the prohibition to start new procedures. At the same time, um, it issued a prohibition of any individual dismissal for a justified objective reasons. What does it mean? Objective uh, reasons for our legislation means economic reason or organizational reasons. So few exceptions to this prohibition are set forth for disciplinary termination, end of fixed term agreements, termination for retirements are uh, outside the prohibition. Um, as explained in the first line, these measures have been issued until May the 16th, but there are uh, rumors, more than rumors, announcement that there will be short an extension of 90, maybe 115 days to meet the end of August. So we have to be prepared to deal with these, uh, let's say, prohibition and measures for the next three months. At the same time, um, the government released some recommendation and some, let's say, relief to the employer because, of course, the prohibition to terminate is a big, let's say, problem for them and it authorized the use of holidays uh, above the limitation that the current legislation uh, set forth. It encouraged the, the payment, the use of paid leaves and the use of any other indemnities that each collective co bargain agreement provides. Um, it is authorized the uh, collective reduction of working time working time. This can be reached through a negotiation with the unions and, uh, uh, of course, any other uh, support that is uh, envisaged by the collective bargain agreement. Um, as far as the possible reduction of salary uh, with the consent of uh, the employee, this is necessary at an individual level because you, the, the employer cannot impose, even in this situation, a reduction of the working time and of the uh, salary as well. Um, possible reduction of salary, uh, it, it is possible, but at two conditions. The first is that there is the agreement of the uh, employee, and the second that the reduction does not go below what is considered the minimum salary uh, uh, considered by each uh, national collective bargaining agreement. There are different kinds of furlough work. Uh, basically, there are three main uh, systems. Uh, each of them have a, its own historic reason and its own mechanism. It, we don't have time to explain all, but in, uh, in very, let's say, in a nutshell, uh, the government has authorized the use, the massive use of these uh, um, programs with the only condition that the employer um, tax them with COVID-19. In other words, there is no the need to meet the other condition, the usual condition that are necessary to grant these uh, reliefs. To be used from the 23rd of February up to the August 13 for nine weeks. These nine weeks are, uh, probably will be uh, will become 18 in a couple of weeks time and uh, it is important to know that the, this measure covers up to the 80 percent of the salary of, of the employee with a cap of 102 uh, 1200 euros that is not very much all these measures have let's say abolished or uh, let's say reduced uh, the uh, importance of the unions that normally would have a big say in the granting of these uh, safety nets or follow programs. At this stage, it is important that the employer informs, duly inform the, the, the unions, but it, it does not have to require the, the agreement of them. Just a, a, a word on the health and safety, like in France, uh, there is a huge let's say, legislation that has been issued in the last couple of weeks about, let's say, security of work. Uh, we have um, 
rules at the government level and rules at regional level. Some of them conflict uh, to, with each other and so there is a need to understand exactly what the employer has to do. Uh, I think that that's it and uh, we can, let's say, consider my speech closed. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Michele. So this was the uh, webinar, it's the end of, of the slides. Um, thank you very much everyone for um, attending the webinar. If you want to, if you have further questions uh, following up on the webinar, you can contact us. We will post this webinar on our various uh, or on, on our respective websites of our, uh, our firms. Uh, you have the contact emails here. I hope this was useful for you. Um, we hope that you um, took away some uh, important advice uh, for your clients um, if your colleagues from the us and thank you very much to all these colleagues for joining uh, and um, to our clients who are joining from the us and also i've seen that there are general managers among them uh, we hope that this was interesting for you and would also be very glad to have some feedback from you if you want to send us um, some feedback or if you have other topics that you're interested in, we're happy to, uh, to come back to that. So please reach out. So this is the point of this webinar to give you the opportunity to reach out to, to us. Finally, I would like to um, mention that we have a, a special dedicated section of our website uh, dedicated to all issues around the corona crisis um, which you can find here under the um, web address which is indicated here and the same applies also to our partners from nctm and altana i want to thank all of the speakers for having attended this and prepared this uh, webinar. Thank you very much, especially to our partners of Altana and NCTM. And so I wish you a very good rest of the day. Uh, stay safe and um, hope to get back to you uh, and be in touch. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.